is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There he is, locked and loaded, ready to go. Yes, sir. How many championships did you win? Uh, well, it was a bloodbath for me in the uh, in the fantasy quarterfinals, but the finals were very kind to me. I went three and zero in uh, in nice. in finals. There was one uh, one of them we just decided to to split the championship after the events of Monday night. But uh, I was I was comfortably in charge there, but it wasn't really settled. And whatever after Monday night, you know, I think we all focused on different things and and uh, maybe just wanted the fantasy season to end at a certain level, right? Right, right. And you still win. So, you know, in the end, you uh, you still come out ahead, which is uh, which is all right. Uh, now we're going to kind of turn the page uh, over the next couple of months. Now we're going to start uh, getting people ready um, and and talking a little bit about keeper leagues and dynasty leagues, the stuff like that, that, uh, that, that that's another drug. How, do, how many uh, do you have any of those keeper? My. Leagues? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My the the leagues that I think everybody ends up the most connected to and the and the most focused on throughout the season end up being dynasty leagues and keeper leagues, right? Where you're retaining players from one season to the next. So, absolutely. I mean, I have some longtime leagues that are that are redraft, where it's like a group of old friends, and it's right. you know, it's great to win those things, great to compete in those things. But the the ones where you feel like a like an actual just visceral connection to the team. Um, they're all dynasty leagues. So, uh, I've got, I've got a couple, I don't happen to have one right now where I just went full youth movement, right? Like I, in fact, all my dynasty leagues this year, I thought I had shots. Um, and I won one of them. I, I had tragic exits in, in a couple of others, but like, you know, I've, I've had one of those seasons where like you, you push all the chips in, you trade some picks, you trade some young pieces and you go for it right now. And so the the one I won, I traded for a, an outrageously expensive Tyreek Hill, who I carry into next year and whose salary causes me problems in that league. But whatever, I got a title with him. Well, okay, so let me ask you something. Um, let's let's talk about some of those players that you want to get right now. Um, and let's talk about some of the guys maybe under the radar right now. The guys that had a bad season. So let's, or guys like Atua that had a great season, but then had all the injuries. So now the value has gone down. People might be a little, they might think it's a risk to hang on to him. So you tell me. Well, all right. couple, couple guys. And I, I think of these names because I was just going through my first round for uh, you know, redraft first round for 2023. Um, I like, I I think you can probably acquire Cooper Cup coming off an injury, right? Like I think that's a thing. He's I, I mean I've got him I've got him fourth right now in my uh, in, in my first round for 2023. Like that is the kind of player coming off of injury. I'll tell you another who's probably going to end up in my first round. I'm not sure where, maybe tennish. Um, Jonathan Taylor. Everybody's down on Jonathan Taylor. Everybody was saying that he was you know one of the busts of the season. I I kind of sort of get it. Like when he was healthy though, he was great. Um, the offensive line was a disappointment. A lot of things were a disappointment, but they're going to come into next year. I don't know how they get there exactly. And I don't know who it's going to be, but you have to figure that they move up in the draft a little bit, get a, you know, get a prime quarterback. If they don't deal for a vet, something like that, like their quarterback situation is going to be better. Jonathan Taylor is still a guy with four, three speed. And he has a 2000 scrimmage yard season on his resume, right? Like it wouldn't, shouldn't shock anybody if Jonathan Taylor finishes as the, as the number one overall running back next year. Um, and I think people are down on him. Another guy who's like kind of out of sight, out of mind was uh, Damian Pierce was was injured at the end of the season. Right. So we didn't see him for like a month in the uh, we didn't see him in the most important weeks in the fantasy calendar. But that guy, that guy finished like top five in the uh, among all running backs in missed tackles forced. And he and he missed like three, four games. Right? <laughs> right? Like that guy is really good. Um, so for the most part, it's just those guys that we didn't see in December or we only saw them sparingly in December, who I think become huge targets for you guys coming off of injuries that we have no reason to worry about going into next year. Um, that that's a player that I'm interested in. All right. So uh, how would you look at Tua? Uh, I'm real, I'm really bullish. I like, it's hard. 
you know, obviously you guys are in it and you're, you're the, you're the hardcore dolphins fan. So you're entirely focused on this coming weekend. Right. So it's, it's almost difficult to take a, to take a long view there. Um, I'm, I'm excited to like, I don't that you guys probably already talked about it on the show. Like what are our chances that two actually plays this week? Cause yeah. they're, they are a terrifying opponent. Like even for the bills uh, with Tua behind the behind center. Oh yeah, no, with Tua it's dangerous. Yes, and their ceiling is probably like twelve points if they don't have Tua. Right, like it's the biggest possible swing. So um, I'm I'm very bullish on him. The the one thing that we don't get from Tua, of course, is uh, is, is that sort of Jalen Hurts, you know, Justin Fields rushing upside. But of course, that rushing upside also comes with a little bit of risk. Um, but two is pretty much settled in as somebody who's certainly going to be a top eight fantasy quarterback next year. And he's going to be in that tier that's just behind, you know, there's going to be a top tier that'll be like Hertz, Mahomes, Allen. And then there's going to be this next tier of, you know, by like Burrow, Fields, um, potentially Herbert and two is like right there. Right. So, and he's, he's probably going to be the cheapest of that, of that second tier of quarterback. Um, it, and that means that he's probably somebody who ends up on a lot of my teams, right? Because whoever whoever that last guy is in a tier, I, I always seem to end up with a lot of with a lot of shares there. I mean, there's we're going to go into next year, and there's still there's not I don't know. Are there two guys that have a, a receiving core that is the equal of the Dolphins? I mean, it's just a, it's that's filthy. Burrow, just, Burrow's the only one that's got um, yeah. Although although. Damn, San Francisco's got a really nice receiver. San Francisco, when you consider like the top three and you roll Kittle in there, is um, is really mm-hmm. difficult to compete with. Yeah. yeah. yeah but that's it. But that's it. Like you've named them. It's Miami, it's Cincinnati, and and then it's San Francisco right now on yeah. paper. And that's you know, and that and that uplifts him. And we've already seen like the the ceiling for Tua when everything clicks, when things are going right, it's it's the Baltimore game. It's a you know, you win your week. Um as long and there's as not the that right many quarterbacks quarterback. like that. Because the other two, all those weapons don't help the other two. Yeah. <laughs> the other two just don't put up the points. You know, yeah. that's that's the thing that, that you know, I think that that's the bright spot about all of this is that if you took them for granted, just look what it what life is without them. And you can see that you shouldn't take them for, you know, for granted. I will, you know, I, I wanted to say, and, and this is not fantasy related in any way, but I, I want to give uh, like a little bit of a shout out to, to Thompson on that. You, you know, the thing that I thought he did well, and obviously he didn't put up a lot of points and he wasn't spectacular or anything like that, but I've rewatched that final drive. And um, he avoided a couple of d- potential disaster plays, right? In in ways that you don't expect a backup to, you know, he like he easily could have gotten sacked on first down on the on the final scoring drive, um, and he he managed to you know tuck the ball, gain a couple yards, and then you're like, all of a sudden it's not second and fifteen, it's second and eight, and that is manageable. And then there was that like botched handoff situation that he got back to the line of scrimmage, which could have easily been a fumble. It could have easily, but you know, it could have been all kinds of bad things. And it turned into kind of a non-issue, right? And those were, you know, I, I, it's not again b- barely shows up in the box score, but like big tip of the cap to him for. Well, he didn't turn it over, man. Which, yeah, that's no. that's huge. That's huge, and that can give you a long career as a backup. In the NFL. He wasn't Joshua Dobbs. Yep. Yeah, okay. like you can have a really splashy box score, but if you give the ball away three times, like you can't win that way. Um, right. And he gave him a, he exactly. gave him a chance to win, and he avoided some potentially, I thought, disastrous plays. Plays where like. Carson Wentz definitely screws that up, right? Like they were. I, I just right. thought I thought that was nice, and he got you there. He landed the play. Oh, so I got a question for you because I don't know. All leagues are different, and the trading and does the tra- trading start right when their league ended this past week or last week or whatever? And so I'm I'm just wondering because Tua's stock has to be down now, right? So if you're going to try to make that move. Do you do it now just in case before he plays the playoff game? Because if he does play the playoff game and shines, the value skyrockets again. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm I'm not in any dynasty leagues where the trade window just is open every day of the year. Um, I kind of wish I was, but I'm not. All my all my leagues have like, you know, there's the trade deadline in season that hits, and then you know, they'll be like some period of time, either it's after the NFL draft or it's before right, them when we have to set contracts or stuff like that. And then, and then we can trade again. But if I, yeah, he would, he would be on that list of guys that I would definitely, that I would definitely make a play for if I had to need a quarterback, you know, I, I, also it's the easiest position in fantasy to fill. So, 
Um, I would not only encourage people to get involved in dynasty leagues, I would encourage people to get involved in super flex leagues. So the quarterback becomes almost as important in your fantasy life as it is in real life. By the way, Steve Keim has also stepped down as GM of the Cardinals along with the firing of Cliff Kingsbury now. So that is also breaking. So new head coach, new general manager uh, coming with the Cardinals. All right. The other guy that does produce with his legs that you talked about is Lamar Jackson. So he needs a new contract. They haven't given him a new contract. Is he really looking for Deshaun Watson type guarantees? That might be a problem. That might be a negotiating issue. He doesn't have an agent. Uh, he does have now a, a recent injury history that you've got to be really concerned about with him because he really has an – you see, when you watch Jalen Hurts, the accuracy has improved with him. A lot, yeah. Right. With Lamar, it has not. It's the same dude over and over again. He can only throw a couple of routes. He's really not – he can't throw the whole tree because he's just not accurate. And so – I'm just wondering, yeah. how do you look at how do you look at the Lamar Jackson offseason as a keeper player, a dynasty player? Um, if, if I first of all, if I had him in dynasty, my focus would be on who are his receivers going to be next year because he's he's never been paired with an alpha, right? Like he's never he, Jalen Hurts um, has an obvious personal commitment to improvement, and you know had a great offseason um, and made a real leap from last year to this year. It also sure helps that not only did Devontae Smith develop, but he landed A.J. Brown, right? He landed one of the five wow. best receivers, six wow. best receivers in football. Huge wow. deal. Um, Lamar has Rashad Bateman, who hasn't been able to stay healthy. Um, he had Hollywood Brown last year, who is certainly not like, you know, good player, um, pro probably a complimentary player, right? Like he's Actually, probably... Actually, has been his best weapon outside, outside of the tight end. Yeah, obviously, obviously, Mark Andrews has been essentially the number one. And to be perfectly honest, like they use Mark Andrews a wide receiver. Like he's he's he never blocks. Like there's no pass blocking there. He's he's running route ninety seven percent of the time. Like he's a he's either in the slot or he's out wide. He's a wide receiver for that team, and so he's kind of been their number one. Um, but they've not had that, you know, whether, whether it's a just go get it X receiver, whether it's that true multi-purpose, you know, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, AJ Brown type of receiver, just don't have that. And so I would like to see Lamar with that guy. If they go into next season and it's still just Gus Edwards and JK Dobbins and your best receiver is Rashad Bateman or similar, I'm yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little bit down on Lamar Jackson, and he's probably the bottom of that tier that I talked about with Tua, right? But on the other hand, if you I don't know if the Ravens go out and land like DJ Moore, they make a play for DeAndre Hopkins, something like that, which is probably probably available, right? And would seem like a good fit for a veteran team like Baltimore. I don't know how the salaries work, all that, but like if they add um, a, a top tier wide receiver or an upper tier wide receiver, I will definitely feel differently about about Lamar. All right, playoffs this week um, for daily fantasy. Is there is there a couple players you're really looking forward to in some of these matchups uh, this week? Talk to me. Yeah, I am. Uh, first of all, I'm looking forward to to Trevor Lawrence. I'm looking like I don't think either team in that game in the Chargers Jaguars game can come right. out of the AFC or make noise beyond this week. But I. I mean, I can't wait to watch that game. I think the Jaguars have been such a great story. Um, I think Lawrence's best games have been, and his best throws have been some of the best that we've seen all season from anyone. Um, and he's doing it with this sort of sketchy receiving core. Christian Kirk is really good. They've got, they've wrung every drop of value out of Zay Jones this year, but like Lawrence gets Calvin Ridley next year. How exciting is that? So I'm just excited to see what the Jaguars look like on this stage against a team that can definitely put up a number. Um, I, I just think these are two really, really interesting, really fun teams. Um, Lawrence is a guy that I might be interested in starting at, at quarterback. Um, the Vikings and Giants, two other teams that can't possibly advance beyond this beyond this week, in my opinion. Yeah. Right, another really interesting game um, because one of them has been kind of a kind of a fluky comeback story. Um, I think the Vikings are really fun. I think Justin Jefferson is a is a strong candidate to be the number one overall pick in drafts next year. Um, but and I, and I think Daniel Jones is fun. There's a pretty good chance 
that like Daniel Jones, as I think about building DFS lineups, there's a pretty good chance actually that Daniel Jones is going to be my quarterback on a lot of those teams. I don't, I haven't looked at salaries yet, um, but Daniel Jones is generally on the cheap side, and there's no, there's no defense that's been more generous this year than than the Minnesota Vikings, right? That, but literally yeah, the only, right. the only thing they've been good at is is they have generated some takeaways, but they just hemorrhage yards and points. Um, and Daniel Jones has had a, you know, it was a signature game a couple weeks ago for him. So I, I think he's probably among the most interesting plays. I also think JK Dobbins would be a pretty good value this week because he was held out uh, this past week against Cincinnati. So he can be fresh for the rematch in a game that really counts. I, I thought Dable has done an, wow. He has incredible done an job. Standing job. And it was really underscored um, in week 18 when it didn't matter, like how well his team played and yeah. how hard they played. Uh, yes. That was that was outstanding. He's been him. He's been Mike great. Tomlin should be up for coach of the year. Yeah. Dan, Dan Campbell, too. Like, shout out to Dan, Dan Campbell. Campbell. By the way, by the way, kudos to Dan Campbell. He did better than I ever expected him to do this year, to be quite mm -hmm. honest. I got to give them credit. I did not see them winning nine games. I uh, I kind of looked at this raw raw stuff as it's overrated and maybe it still is, but this year at least I got to give him some love because he did way better than I expected the Lions. I expected the Lions to have another five win season, you know, to so be I, in that area. But to I, I think it's shocking that um, that offense was so good that the conversation yeah. now is all of a sudden, wow, do we just have our guy and Jared Goff and we don't have to get a quarterback? Like, that's kind of amazing to me because the assumption all along was that, that like, the Lions were laser focused on this quarterback class. And how do we get, you know, how do we get I'd a dude still draft out, a out of this? If I'm them. I'd still draft a quarterback. Yeah. Here. I, I would as well. It, it's just their offense was so great all season that it's at least a conversation, you know. Oh no, definitely, definitely. I mean, God bless him, bro. But but you don't know if until he comes back next year and does it again. Yeah, that's when you'll know that he crossed that threshold. Because if not, then all we have basically is, um, oh God, what's his name for uh, the Browns? About uh, Derek Anderson. About 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, two thousand the two thousand seven Browns the the uh, uh, phenomenal wow, Derek. You even, you even know the exact year it was oh seven. Oh my god, I think it was oh seven. It was Derek Anderson. It was Braylon Edwards, and nobody saw it coming, and they didn't repeat it. Um, but it was magical. Yeah, I want to say he threw like twenty seven touchdowns that year or something. It's and, amazing. And it's like you know, and they gave him that contract, and then he never ever did it again. And so that's the problem, you know, because Jared. When he was with the Rams, they kind of hit him in there. You know, they just had him facilitate mm -hmm. pretty much. He didn't have to carry because those early days, you know, obviously they had Gurley and they had all those guys going. They had a hell of they, they had a hell of an offense at, at that time when he stepped right in. So he didn't really have to do a ton. Now he's actually grown and and he's done a really, really good job. And let me tell you, they and they traded their their stud tight end. In the in the in the middle of that season, you know what I mean? That, that was a huge loss for them because Hawkinson is a damn good player, bro. The the funny thing is, as soon as they traded Hawkinson, obviously number one, Hawkinson was thriving in Minnesota, which rarely yeah. happens when a tight end is traded midseason. But they kept getting big games out of relatively random tight ends, right? Like Zilstra yeah. had a two touchdown game. Wright had a two touchdown game. They were like the t they yeah. built the whole red zone offense out of tight ends. And they right. had incredible success with it. So just a just a fun offense. I imagine they lose their coordinator because that offense was unbelievable with some weird pieces. Um, and it probably regresses right, way, next year. Dan Campbell's former position is? Oh, tight end. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, that's a good call. Okay. So not, not surprised that even the backups are guys that actually can produce for you because he probably has an eye for that position since that's what he uh, ended up playing. All right. What do you got going on at, uh, at Yahoo? How do, what do you guys do now as we turn the page? Yeah, we're actually, um, we have a, a really interesting group feature coming out where we all just sort of give our top 12 uh, for next season. So that's always, you know, a lot of spicy takes there, a lot for people to talk about and digest with that one. And we're going to continue uh, at least a couple times a week, the Yahoo Fantasy Football forecast. That is our pod. Uh, we're going to be doing, you know, preview pods, review pods, all that uh, throughout the playoffs. All right, there you go. Follow him on Twitter at Andy Barron's. And go over to Yahoo Sports and follow them there as they uh, carry you through the off season like we do here on the platform. Andy, as always, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. Thanks, brother.
You got it. There you go. Andy Barron's Sports Grill. Yeah, eight great locations now. We just added the Doral location of Sports Grill. So now it's eight awesome locations. Great food, great atmosphere. It's a great place to enjoy with friends and family members. So get on out there to all those locations. And remember, during the NFL and NCAA games, remember tonight we've got the national championship game going on, $1.50 Bud Light drafts and bottles. Uh, new cocktails, they added the cherry lemonade and the tailgate tea, only $5 during NCAA and NFL games. Take advantage tonight. Bone-in wings, 15% off. Buttermilk chicken sandwich, they added that now to the menu, and it is delicious. The buffalo tater tots. The hot sauces are available. Buffalo sauce, Miami Heat, Blackberry, the uh, the Dale, the barbecue. They got it all for you. And today is Monday, the single smash burger, only $7 at Sports Grill. This is the Big O Show.